Hi, welcome to Theo's Epic Videos. Today we're going to get stuck into learning how to TIG weld with the Unimig Razor 200 ACDC TIG welder. Just going through, setting up the regulator and the airflow meter, connecting all the hoses. Just going to secure the gas bottle, make sure it doesn't knock over while I'm trying to play around with some steel. Just cracking the gas on, making sure there's no leaks. Yep, she's good to go. She's in the green zone. Hook up my heavy duty uh, extension lead there. Now, this welder is 10 amps, so I didn't need, need this extension cord. I just uh, needed a little bit extra room between the bench and the welder. Now I'm gonna attach the earth cable to the positive terminal and the torch to the negative terminal. The quick fit gas connectors are a little bit fiddly, but uh, they do eventually pop in. Now the torch does have T, uh, two T and four T functions. Two T means you just hold it down, it arcs, and let go of it when you want to stop welding, and four T, which is like press on, press off style. And I do have a play around with both settings. This welder also comes with lift arc and high frequency start functions. I use high frequency start in this video. Now, look, I ducked down to Bunnings just to get some gear for this. Uh, the uh, welder comes with a thorium tungsten, 2.4 mil, but I just got a multi-pack of tungsten. And I just got some mold, um, filler rod. Ripped a few bits of scrap out of the scrap bin and now we're going to get our tungsten ready for TIG welding. Here's a quick guide for anyone who's not familiar with the different types of tungsten and the best one to use is the lanthanated gold. It gives the best all-round performance. Here we have a go at sharpening the tip. Now I'll pop up a quick guide on how to sharpen your tungsten and what to expect. What we're trying to achieve is about a six millimeter cut back from the very point of the tungsten to where the angle finishes. So for the 2.4 millimeter, 2.5 times that is six mil. The most important thing is to grind the way that I'm doing it because it actually affects the way that the uh, electricity flows down the tungsten creating the arc. And the other important part is how sharp the tip is. Now the wider the tip is, the wider your arc is going to be. So I'm just threw some settings into the welder. I don't exactly know what I'm doing. I've set it to 2T, pulses off, 125 amps peak. Um, I checked the, down uh, the up slope and the down slope, but again, I'm just gonna give it a crack and see how it goes. Just gonna check that the gas works before I kick off. We're looking for about 11 to 12 uh, liters per minute. And that's in the Unimig book. Um, and that's all that this regulator flows at. So I did have a quick play around with it. Um, some suggest a little bit higher than that, but that's all I could get out of this regulator without playing with it too much. One of the things they say about TIG welding is that it's important to clean the steel. So. I'm not too stressed about getting great welds, I'm just want to focus on trying to get some technique. Now straight off the bat, I know I'm going in the wrong direction. I actually sent this little clip to a mate who's a uh, much more experienced TIG welder than I am. And basically he said, uh, yeah, you're going the wrong way. So, but that's all right. So you can see that it's way too hot. So I had to turn the welder down. It was just, the arc was blowing straight through the steel. So I just changed some settings, keep having to play around and have another crack. And again, probably going in the wrong direction, but, or I'm going in the wrong direction, but, but again, just learn. No doubt if you're learning too, you're gonna to make some mistakes. I definitely made a few while I was trying to make this video, but 
get in, give it a crack, and have a go. Start learning how to TIG well. That's the most important thing. I never set out in this video to be a perfect TIG welder. I just wanted to learn how to use the machine and get used to playing around with the settings um, and seeing how it behaved when I try different things and have a bit of fun with it. If you want to set up your uh, practice steel like I have, just get a one mil cutting disc and cut into some scrap steel. And here you can see that I, uh, I dipped the tungsten in there, so I'm going to have to resharpen it. I probably ended up dipping it about four or five times trying to uh, make this video, but practice makes perfect. So here's a fresh bit of steel, and uh, after a bit of a chat with a mate who told me I was going the wrong direction, it's time to try the right direction. And here I'm just practicing run after run after run, just trying to get my technique correct. But it's pretty hard when you don't actually have a technique to start with, so I'm just going to have to keep practicing. What I found was too that I think two seconds of post gas is actually way too short. You need a little bit more because you'd always find, and you'll see at the end, that there's actually a, like a little hole in each of the ends of the weld. And that, to me, says that there's a bit of oxygen getting into the weld, and obviously that's something you're trying to avoid while you're TIG welding or any sort of welding. I was pretty happy with this weld. It's probably one of the cleanest ones I've completed in this uh, video and here's the run of all the welds that I completed on this test piece just to show you uh, you know it's not perfect but it's a good start towards the end of the day I started playing with the torch settings one of the settings is to take it off 2T which is basically you press it on to and hold it and then once you release it it goes to post weld um, 4T allows you to press the button, start the gas, press it again to start the arc, and then press it again to finish the welding process. So I played around with that. I also started playing around with the pulse settings. Um, now pulse is supposed to give you a whole lot more control. Um, and with three millimeter steel, because it is a quite a forgiving material, you don't really need boy. I don't think you really need to play with pulse unless you're trying to control a lot of heat for accuracy. So it was fun to play around with. Uh, I had to play around with the Hertz and the, the base amps and the, and the peak amps and the pulse width and stuff like that. But I think it'll come more into its own when I start playing around with aluminium. Dip the tungsten again. You're gonna do that a lot, so just be prepared. Look, if you don't have a bench grinder at home, I picked up that Renegade one for about $89. Um, so definitely go and grab yourself one if you're going to learn to TIG weld. You can get away with using flappy disks and other things, but they, a lot of welding forums and stuff do suggest that you get a bench grinder. It makes your life a lot better. And here we can see all the practice runs that I did for the day. Nothing perfect, but it was good fun giving it a crack. Let me know in the comments if you what you'd like to see next. I'll be doing a project next up. Uh, mate wants a fabrication, so yeah, we'll give that a crack and see how we go. Just like to say thanks for watching, and uh, if you want to see more, hit me up in the comments and uh, come on, follow me on the socials.